Welcome to No Rares Required, episode 46, Golgari Food. Between yesterday's red-white Boros archetype and Golgari today, you should have a good set of tools going into the arena open. Blue will be handy to figure out, but I'll save that for future episodes. To start things off, here is my draft skeleton, limited to 17 commons, 5 uncommons, and 1 rare. The important thing is to notice uh, that although there is an equal split between black and green cards, all 5 of my uncommons are green. So you'll want to get into this archetype when you open green uncommons early. After that, it's a typical mid-range build, around 7 cards that cost 4 or more, at least 5 removal, especially because there aren't many great 2-drops, so candy grapple becomes very important to survive your opponent's early aggression. With that in mind, let's dive into the cards individually. Hopeless Nightmare is one of the top performing black commons, and in Black Green Golgari, I think it is a cut above the rest. It's a great target for Bargain, since it triggers a Scry 2 when it goes to the graveyard, but against other mid-range decks, making your opponent discard a card can win you the game through value. Its win rate is much lower in Black Red Rakdos, where the game is about early aggression, for example. Candy Grapple is also one of the top performing black commons and is very necessary for success. As you'll see, Golgari doesn't have a great selection of 2-drops, so Candy Grapple is key if the opponent is applying early pressure. And if you draw it later in the game, you can bargain it by sacrificing one of your many food tokens to give a creature minus 5, minus 5. One of the benefits of having food tokens is you can sacrifice them to regain life and stabilize against aggro, or use them to outvalue your opponent in the mid-game. For example, you can use food to bargain to make Hamlet Glutton cheaper, so you get a 6-6 Trampler that gains you 3 life for only 5 mana, an excellent mid-range threat, and the 6 Toughness gets around most of the removal in the set. And Golgari has a ton of cards that make food tokens when they enter the battlefield. My favorite is Sweet Tooth Witch, because not only does she create a food when she enters the battlefield, but you can also use your food supply to burn away your opponent's life total. You also have Removal that can create a food token. Feed the Cauldron creates a food token if you cast it on your turn. And I've found that I want to create the food token most of the time. Outside of setting up a 2 for 1, since it can only destroy creatures with mana value 3 or less, uh, you need the food token to get the advantage value-wise. And that food is also pretty handy if you're up against aggro. Scream Puff is great top end. You get a 4 5 death touch, but most importantly, whenever Scream Puff deals combat damage to a player, you create a food token. Especially as more people start to pick up the cards that are good at creating food tokens, like Sweet Tooth Witch, I think Scream Puff will become more important since it can create multiple food tokens over time. It's still early in the set, but Leaping Ambush has been pretty impressive in Golgari. It works quite well with Scream Puff when you come up against a 5-5 like Gingerbread Hunter or a 6-6 like Hamlet Glutton. Or you can use it to save your early blockers from removal or simply to win a combat. It also untaps the creature so you can catch your opponent off guard. Just remember to do it before declaring blockers. And the reach can be relevant if you're up against flyers. Hollow Scavenger is another great way to create food. It doesn't create one on entering the battlefield, but it comes with a 1 cost adventure that creates one. Then for 3 you get a 3-2 that can sacrifice a food at instant speed for 1 colorless mana to get plus 2 plus 2 once each turn. It's good early pressure, but most importantly it allows you to trade up with 5 toughness creatures, and even just threatening the activation can persuade your opponent to not block. Ratout didn't make the draft skeleton, but it is a great alternative if, if you are short on candy grapples. You need something to slow your opponent down, and although the 1-1 one, one rat token can't block, the minus 1-1 one, minus one removes plenty of your opponent's early plays. You can also use it as a cheap way to tip a combat in your favor. Conceited Witch didn't make my draft skeleton because it doesn't create a food token, but the Wicked Roll token from the adventure side for 1 black still works as a plus 1 plus 1 buff that can be bargained away to play a cheap Hamlet Glutton later, and makes a decent alternative to Sweet Tooth Witch. Monstrosity did make the draft skeleton because it is the only 2 drop at common that I aim to play. As a 3-1, it can push damage early if your opponent stumbles on their early plays, but more importantly, it can trade up in value, and then when it dies, it creates a food token, which is quite important for the archetype for the synergies I, I mentioned earlier. 
not dead after all. I had in my first edition of the uh, draft skeleton, but I decided to substitute it for leaping ambush, especially since several of the commons create a food token when they enter the battlefield. It has nice synergies in the black green Golgari archetype. Shadow of the Oath didn't make my draft skeleton because there are better removal options available, but if you're running short of hitting the magic number five, uh, you can play Shatter the Oath. Also, since it is it is missing the word then, it creates a wicked roll, even if the target is no longer legal when the spell resolves. I've really enjoyed Ferocious Werefox, especially in Golgari. Hamlet Glutton already has Trample, but giving Scream Puff a plus one plus one monster roll creates the all-powerful Trample Death Touch combo. The other thing too that I missed at first is that it is an instant. Winning a combat through a trick feels so much better since the roll sticks around for future rounds. Then a 4-3 trample for 4 is a reasonable stat block. And I still can't tell how I feel about Brave the Wilds. I almost didn't mention it, but it is on my radar for cards to consider. I used it in a Simic deck to cut down on lands so that I could thin my deck to find more of my 5 drops. It's a good way to splash, but I would cut a land for each one that you decide to play, as long as you have a minimum of 8 green sources. If you're low on cards that create food, you can always include a copy of Candy Trail. It comes with a Scry 2 and then draws a card when it is sacrificed for life. You'll also want to see how many benefits you can get off of Bargain before adding it to your deck. You won't get the card draw if you sacrifice to Bargain, but fodder that comes with a scry is decent filler. And now for the uncommons. Gingerbread Hunter is a mythic level uncommon that I recommend taking over most rares. Its adventure side, Puny Snack, isn't the best removal, but it's free in a sense. And most of the adventures cost a little bit more, about one mana more than what you would expect, since they are two cards in one. But a 5-5 five five for 5 that creates a food token is about what you'd expect to pay and getting two cards in one is a great way to outvalue your opponent. Golgari also gets two mythic level uncommons. Welcome to Sweet Tooth is awesome. You get a 1-1 one, one human token, a food, and then in chapter three, you give a creature X 1-1 one, one counters, where X is one plus the number of food. So without playing food on turn three, it's at least a plus two plus two. The real dream and synergy to look for is Ginger Brute, since it is a food creature, you could line up giving it plus four plus four, and a five five pseudo unblockable creature on turn four is quite the clock. Almost at mythic level, but just not quite enough for me to justify the pack one pick one is tough cookie, especially since there aren't many great two drops and it triggers a food token when it enters the battlefield. And later in the game, you can animate those food tokens into four four artifact creatures. Just be careful to track which ones have summoning sickness, because it still applies. Assuming you drafted enough tools to survive the onslaught of enemy aggro decks, the next question is to ask yourself, uh, how do I gain an advantage over my mid-range opponent? One way is taken by nightmares. The other green archetypes lack good removal for your biggest threats like Hamlet Glutton, and usually have to rely on trading creatures. Not Golgari, though. Golgari just removes the big creature, and then between Welcome to Sweet Tooth and Hopeless Nightmare, you have a pretty decent chance of triggering a Scry 2 as well. It didn't make my draft skeleton only because I think you should prioritize removal that helps you survive the early game. A great card to grab to protect your big green creatures from black removal spells is Royal Treatment. It gives your creature hexproof until end of turn, and then a royal roll for a neat little plus one plus one and ward one, so it can even help you win a combat. Another reward for having plenty of food tokens for bargain is Agatha's Champion. It's removal and a 4-4 trampler for 5 mana if you bargain it. And another way to beat your mid-range opponent is to simply outvalue them with card draw. Tanglespan Lookout didn't make my draft skeleton, but especially if I found myself with Conceited Witch, which creates the wicked rolls instead of food, it's a worthy inclusion. Or you can go without valuing your opponent through card dry by Up the Beanstalk. 
I think originally designed with green blue Simic in mind, you have several five drops like Scream Puff, Gingerbread Hunter, and Hamlet Glutton that I'm actively trying to draft. So up the beanstalk is a good conclusion. And another five drop that feels comparable to Hamlet Glutton is High Fae Negotiator. It also gains three life if bargained, but instead of getting a 6-6 six, six Trampler, you get a 3-5 Flyer, and you also get to zap your opponent for three life. Spellscorn Coven is also great, even if you uh, can't easily cast the adventure side. A 2-3 Flyer that makes your opponent discard um, and you know gets that final card out of their hand synergizes quite nicely with the Hopeless Nightmares to ensure that your opponent is hellbent and relying on top decks. Greta also made my list, but it's somewhat underwhelming from what I expected. You already have a lot of options that create a food token when they enter the battlefield, and it doesn't come at the cost of requiring both colors of mana. Um, the one, the plus one plus one counter has felt somewhat underwhelming outside of putting it on something like Ginger Brute, since most of the cards in Golgari aren't evasive. Edgewall Inn is also worth a mention because the only thing better than playing Gingerbread Hunter is playing it a second time after it has gone to the graveyard. And since you don't have many early plays, the fact that it enters tapped isn't that bad of a drawback. And now for the rares. Lord Skitter Sewer King is a top performing black rare. I think its best archetype will be Black Red Rakdos, but time will tell. Gruff Triplets is one of the more busted rares we've seen in a while. No easy solution outside of having a counterspell, since it makes three bodies when it enters the battlefield. And then if you remove one, the other two get bigger, until you're left with a 12-12. And look, they decided to give them Trample. Absolutely disgusting. At least it has Triple Pip Green. The rare that I chose for my draft skeleton was Fawn Spain Troll. It's basically Agatha's champion, but only costs 4, and it has Trample. At least until you remove it to trigger a fight, and then you can do it again. You just need to reattach an aura from a card like Ferocious Werefox or Conceited Witch. Mosswood Dread Knight was my second runner-up for the Golgari-specific rare. Its adventure side, Dread Whispers, is a sorcery that costs 1 and a black to draw a card at the cost of 1 life. Its creature side is a 3-2 Trampler for 2, that when it dies, you can cast it from your graveyard for its adventure, which then lets you play it as a creature again. A great recurring threat, especially when you aren't splashing for its adventure. The Huntsman Redemption is amazing, especially if you have something broken like Gruff Triplets in your deck. You get a 3-3 three, three for 3 in Chapter 1, sacrifice a creature to tutor up something like Gruff Triplets on Chapter 2, then Chapter 3, two creatures get plus 2, plus 2, and trample. That's a lot of value in one card. And since you aren't looking for early aggression, you can afford to play tap lands. And Golgari got the best of the new man lands, Restless Cottage. For two and a black and a green, you get a 4-4 four, four creature that whenever it attacks, it creates a food token and exiles a card from a graveyard. This has been one of the better rares in Golgari, so don't sleep on the lands. It's still a little early for the mythics, so I'll try to remember to add them to the comments below as the set progresses. Thank you for watching to the end. I hope this helps you prepare for the Arena Open this upcoming weekend. Remember to hit like and subscribe for more Magic the Gathering content. I'll be back in one week to co cover another archetype, so if you have one you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for the support, and I'll see you next week.